Welcome to another message from God's Word. We're studying the Gospel of Matthew from the Greek language. Before we get into our verses, which is, starts with verse number 28 and 29, I want to go back to the book of Isaiah and verse number, chapter number 40. And we'll get some background for this chapter and this message, The Blind Shall See, and the Blind See. A voice is crying, one calling out, Clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be filled up and every mountain and hill made low. And let the rough ground become a plain and the rugged train a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice calls out, What shall I call out? All flesh is grass, and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass, and the grass withers, and the flower fades. But the word of God stands forever. Now go to Isaiah 35. We're going back and forth. Now Isaiah, the prophecies of the Messiah don't come in like 1 chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but they're scattered all over. And Isaiah 35, Say to those with an anxious, palpitating heart, Take courage and fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. The recompense of God will come, but he will save you. The eyes of the blind shall be opened. The ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame will leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb will shout for joy. Now go back into the book of Matthew. Go to the book of Matthew. The 11th chapter. Now when John Now when John in prison heard of the works of Christ, he sent a word, a message by his disciples. And said, Are you the expected one, or shall we look for someone else? And Jesus answered and said to them, Go and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached unto them, and blessed is he who keeps from stumbling over me. And as these were going away, Jesus began to speak to the multitudes about John the Baptist. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at, a reed shaken by the wind? What did you go out to see, a man dressed in soft clothing, like in palaces? Behold, those who wear soft clothing are in king's palaces. And why did you, what did you go out to see? To see a prophet, yes. And I say to you, one who is more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. Behold, I will send my messenger before your face. In Mark, or Malachi 3 and verse 1. Who will prepare the way before you? Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there is not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist, yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he, and I won't even go into that. And from the days of John the Baptist unto now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence by the Jews. And from now on, I mean even now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence in cults and isms. And violent men take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. The law and the prophets were until John. And if you accept it, he himself is Elijah, who was to come. 
Who has ears to hear, let him hear. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, there's several things here that we need to go back and look at some. First of all, when a king came to an area, there were emissaries sent out to herald his coming. And the roads that he, were go he was going to walk on and ride on were made smooth. The ditches and the ruts were all taken out and smoothed out. And then there were crowds that were expect that would expect the king to come and they better be there to cheer him as he went by. All the local citizens, wherever he went. Now all of this, God said that he would send forth his son. In the fullness of time to come, God would send forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. That we who are under the law, and that is the commandments, that were condemned to death, might have life through him. John the Baptist was that herald. He was the Elijah in Malachi, the third chapter that was to come. He came. Not only did he come, he presented the Messiah to Israel, and Messiah rejected their king. Now, one thing that was a Messianic credential only, people were, lepers were healed in the Old Testament. Naaman was healed. People were raised from the dead. And yet in the New Testament, the one messianic credential that the only Messiah would have is the blind shall see, the lame shall walk, and the dead. All of these things that, that foretold Christ to come. Elijah was a, was a type of Christ in some ways. Joseph was a type of Christ in many ways in the Old Testament. Jacob, Israel said that the lion of the tribe of Judah would come forth and that he would subject all of his brothers unto him. That it would be great and all that his brothers would praise him as they had not Joseph, his descendant. Now let's go to the 29th chapter, I mean the 20th chapter, verse number 29 in Matthew it said here in verse number 28 that the Son of Man would be a substitute. He would come and he would be a substitute. And he would serve, and not to be served, but he would serve. And that he would give his life as a substitute for others. Now verse 29, we, we have something here. We have the proof of Jesus' messianic credentials. Jesus did miracles to prove who he was. Jesus did miracles to prove who he was. The apostles did miracles to prove that they were receiving the Word of God. Now, so many people today are very confused about the, uh, the act of God healing people today. Now, God does heal people today. When we pray for them, when we take them to the doctor, when they put medicine on them, give them medicine, put medicine on them, put medicine in them, operate on them, fix them, sew them back up, put them together, we pray that God will restore them to health. And many times He does. But the gift of healing is not in the atonement. The gift of healing is not in the atonement. We don't have the power to heal today. Now let's go on. Jesus was healing people to prove that he was the Messiah. Messiah, King of Israel. Kai ek poru omenon alton apo eriko akulathesen alto oklos polis. And going out for themselves from Jericho. Jericho means the city of palm trees. It followed the crowd as a unit. Here it says it followed and listened to him. A crowd. Now this crowd much is probably five to ten, twelve thousand people. Now we already read Matthew 11. We read Isaiah 35. We read 
we read Isaiah 40, 3 through 9. And we know that one of the messianic credentials is to heal the blind. No one else could do it. Kai edu diu tifloi kathemenoi para tain hodon akusantes hote esus para ge ekrasen lagontes kire elerson emas we dali. And behold, two blind ones, Tifloi, two blind ones, two blind men, actually. We know that from the gender of, of the Tifloi. Two blind men, that's nominally plural masculine, two blind men, uh, setting for themselves. They kept on setting beside the way. The word way, though, hold on, that means the road. That means the highway. And having heard that Jesus, he is passing by, they cried out, saying, Kyrie eleison himas via Davi. And the two blind ones sitting beside the way, having heard that Jesus, he is passing by, they cried out, saying, Lord, you pity us, Lord of mercy. One of the messianic titles was the man of loving kindness. And they evoke that one to him. Man of loving kindness, show pity to us, son of David, son of David. They recognize Jesus as the king of Israel and as the son of David. They recognized him as the king of Israel and the son of David. Now let's look at this next little thing here. Hode o close epite masen. Altois hina sio pe sosen hoe de maison ekrazon lagontes kudie eluson himas via davi. And the crowd rebuked, uh, this is 10,000 people or so, rebuked them. Everybody saying boo, boo, boo. That they should be shut their mouths, basically, that they should be muzzled. But the one more, but the ones more, they cried out, saying, Lord, you pity us, son of David. Now here we have something unusual in the, today's world. We have people out panhandling begging all over the countries, especially the big cities. Panhandling begging. Now, in verse number 32, it tells something here. These people did not want to be beggars. They didn't like their occupation. They didn't want to have to depend on somebody to give them something. They wanted to be well. Kai stas ho esus, efo eson autos kai epanti lethelete ho eson himen. And having stood, Jesus having called to them, and he said, What do you wish that I may do to you? Lugusen autokiriehina, anogusen hoi athomos himon. And they said to him, Lord, Master Jehovah, in order that they may be opened the eyes of us. Now, I'll tell you a little story. This is a true story. A true story. Judge Roy Bean in Pecos, Texas, at uh, Langtree, Texas, actually named after Lily Langtree. He was a judge in that area, the the, the law west of the Pecos, as it was as it was as he was called. There was a man on crutches, crippled, came into the Benigrone Saloon. And he was crippling along. Judge Moore Bean was a real soft-hearted man. He called upon all of his uh, visitors to his little saloon to take up an offering for this man, and they just filled a big cup full of money. Well, he gave that money to the man, and the man left. 
Everybody had a drink and the man left. The man went crippling along and he come up to the railroad train and the railroad train was moving slowly but he threw his crutches in the boxcar and jumped in there and rode. He jumped in there like nothing was wrong with him. The people that followed this man went back and told Judge Roy Bean. Judge Roy Bean uh, formed a posse and they went after the man. They drug him back to the saloon. And Judge Roy Bean said, Do you want to be crippled, huh? What shall I do for you so that you can honestly ply your trade? Okay. Go find me a saw, boys. Then he took a marker. He said, well, you know, he laid the man out on the table. And he ripped his pants open on his leg. And he began to think and to talk. He said, well, now, if we, if we cut this man's foot off, he would be legitimate. He wants to be crippled so he can ply his trade. So let's help him do it. And they said, well, you know, let's cut it off at the ankle. So they marked a mark on the ankle. And Judge Boyd being, well, he could get a false foot. Let's go up a little further and make this real legitimate. So they marked up a little bit higher. And then somebody said, you know, a man's not really crippled until you cut, up, cut him off at the knee. So they put a mark right there at the knee, and he said, now, go get the saw. And they brought in a rusty old saw. And a man's eyes were as big as watermelons, just absolutely. I mean, this man was scared to death. He had fooled the wrong people. But Judge Roy Bean was going to make an honest man out of him now. And they marked it all up, and they finally got it all the way up to the middle of his thigh. He said, this will do it. This man will be legitimately crippled, and he can ply his trade. We'll do this. Let's go have a drink first. And they marked that place real good. They went over to the bar, and Judge, Boy Jean, Judge Roy Bean was chuckling a little bit. And the old boy jumped up and began to run. And Judge Roy Bean began to chuckle. And he went out to the door and he started firing his pistol in the air. The old boy went off and they never saw him again. He made a, Judge Roy Bean made an honest man out of him that day. The man wanted to be healed. <laughs> yeah, like these boys that were blind saying to him, Lord, in order that they may be open the eyes of us. They may be opened the eyes of us. We know you can do it, Jesus. We know, Lord, we know you can do it. Verse number 34. Splag nistes deho esus hepsato ton O maton, alton kai euthios, anablepsen, kai akulu theson, alton. Only the Messiah could heal the blind. Now remember, everywhere Jesus went, down here by Jericho is where all the priests had a retreat. They had a retreat down there. They would go down there and they would rest in between their services and they would drink and they would make merry and this was their place. Now this is where the priests were. This is where many Pharisees were and they are all watching Jesus. And Jesus is proving one more time. Every one of the people that he healed had to go to a local synagogue and tell them, I am healed. Give me a certificate of healing that I am whole and clean that I can go to church again. Having been filled with mercy, the Jesus 
he touched for himself the eyes of them. And immediately, not progressively, but immediately, they saw again. Now, the way they saw again means at one time they must have been able to see. Something happened. Maybe their eyes were put out. Maybe they had some kind of a of ophthalmic disease. Whatever happened to them, they could not see. But now they could see again. And now they didn't ply their trade of begging any longer, and they followed him, and they became, that would mean they followed and listened to him. They followed and listened to him. Let's go back and read this now. I have the Amplify, or not the Amplify, but the New American Standard. And as they were going out from Jericho, this is the priest retreat, and by the way, this is where the, the Samaritan took mer mercy and pity upon the man that was laying there on this road to Jericho. Now they're going up to Jerusalem from there. This is where the story took place of the Good Samaritan. The priest went by and turned and looked the other way. The Pharisees looked the other way. Yet, the Samaritan, the no good, he had mercy upon him, set him upon his own donkey, took him to a hospital, so to speak, left money for him to be taken care of and nurtured back into hell, and said, oh, when I come back, I'm going to check on him, and I will pay you more, whatever you had to pay, do for him. And as they were going out of Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the road, hearing that Jesus was passing by, cried out, saying, Lord, have mercy upon us, son of David. First of all, they accepted Jesus Christ as Lord, the Lord of heaven. Number two, they accepted him as the king of Israel, to being the son of David. They accepted him as Messiah. Verse number 31, And the multitude sternly told them, Be quiet, be muzzled, shut up. But they cried out all the more, saying, Son, Lord, have mercy on us, Son of David. Son of David. Let's go back to the Old Testament for just a moment. Let's go back to the Old Testament, all the way back to the book of Genesis. The book of Bobby Sheep. All the way back to the book of Genesis. If I can find it, I know I have it. The book of Genesis. And chapter number 49. Now Jacob summoned his sons and said, Assemble yourselves that I may tell you what shall befall you in the days to come. Prophecy. Gather together, O here, O sons of Jacob, and listen to Israel, your father, because God named him Israel. That is the covenant name. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, preeminent in dignity and preeminent in power. Uncontrolled as water, and you shall not have a preeminence, because you want up to your father's bed. Then you defiled him, and he went to up to my couch. Simeon and Levi, you are brothers. Their swords are implements of violence when they went and killed all those men in Shechem, murdered all those new converts. Let my soul not enter into your council. Let not my glory be united with their assembly because of their anger. They slew men. They, that's the word Hamas. In their Hamas, they slew men. And in their self-will, they lamed oxen. They not only killed men, but they lamed innocent oxen so that it could not be used to plow or implements of work. Cursed be their anger, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. I will disperse them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Levi, that's the priest. They didn't have an inheritance. Judah, your brother shall praise you. Judah, your brother shall praise you. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's son shall bow down to you. 
Judah is a lion's well. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He couches, he lies down as a lion. And as a lion, who dares to rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff between his feet, until the Lord comes, until Shiloh comes. To him shall be obedience of the peoples. His ties is full to the vine, and his donkey's coat to the choice vine. And he washes his garments with wine, and his robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes are, are dull from wine, and his teeth white from milk. That's Messiah, King of Israel. That's the Messiah, King of Israel. I hope that we have tied some things together for you from God's Word tonight. Jesus is the Messiah promised to Israel. Israel willingly and knowingly rejected their Messiah King. This last little place here, as we read it, as we read the last few verse, verses now, we will see that Israel willingly rejected her Messiah and they knew who he was. The multitude sternly told them, Be quiet, but they cried out even the more, saying, Have mercy on us, son of David. And Jesus stopped and called them, What would you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Lord, we want our eyes to be open. We want to see again. And moved with compassion, Jesus shut their eyes and immediately they regained, regained. They once could see, but they could not see. They regained their sight and they followed him. And how many that could see, how many of those Pharisees, how many of those Jews, how many of those Levites, how many of those priests, how many of those Sakari, how many of those Herodians, How many of the Sadducees and the Pharisees would not hear? Because their eyes were blinded by their hate and by their preconceived ideas. They didn't want to lose their power and their control over this nation. And they would kill to keep it. Our Heavenly Father, we send this message out. I pray, said Father, somewhere that some Jewish person will hear this and be born again and realizing that the Messiah has come that missed the boat so many years ago. Father, forgive me where I fail you. And I pray, Father, that you watch over all of my students out there, wherever they are in the world. Those that so faithfully give, Father, and I pray that, that you put upon their hearts of all of them that have means to help so that we can go on and keep the website up. Father, you know how desperately we need this and faithful givers every month. Father, I pray that you convict their hearts of that. That they will give from their hearts and they will love your word even more. And that you'll just make their hearts sing with, with praises to you. I pray for each and every one of them, Father. Thank you for those that you've given under my care. Help me to care for them and feed them always. With this website for years to come. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.